Every day, around 27 Canadians become diagnosed with a brain tumor. Nearly one in two Canadians gets diagnosed once with cancer in their lifetime. These are very shocking statistics, aren't they? Cancer is still one of the common causes of death in Canada. How many of you know someone who got diagnosed with cancer in the past or is recently treated against cancer? Probably many. I'm a cancer survivor myself. And so is my mother and her father. I'm coming from a family with quite some cancer incidences. I'm still lucky. I was a kid and I barely remember anything about it. But I still remember the cancer of my mother. Seeing her going through several treatments, chemotherapy, radiation, I saw her losing all her hair. These diseases like cancer are very draining for her as a patient, but also for the whole family. I'm Teresa. And I'm a PhD student at McGill in the neuroscience program, trying to understand how our unique genetic information are contributing to brain cancer diversity. Brain cancer patients undergo standard treatment, including a complex surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Despite all these aggressive treatments, these tumors tend to come back just several weeks or months or maybe a few years later. But why is that, that these treatments are not as effective for every patient? Imagine we can describe 120 different types of brain tumors, not one, 120 different types with all unique characteristics. So with one standard treatment, we probably don't get that far yet. So why do we have such a big diversity of brain tumors? One of the main reasons that I'm interested in are the differences in our genetic information that lead to this broad diversity of brain tumors. So these differences in genetic information, how do they contribute to this diversity? Let's take a step back and simplify it a little bit. Every one of us looks very unique, for sure. We all have a pair of eyes and a nose and a mouth. But some of us are born naturally blonde, others have brown hair. You may have blue eyes like me, or you may have green eyes or brown eyes. Overall, we all look very unique. And this is due to our differences in genetic information. So our genetic information are a little bit like a fingerprint. We all have one and it has certain shapes and forms, but there are tiny differences that make it unique for every one of us. We can identify people just based on their fingerprints. Cancer is a little bit like a fingerprint. For sure, patients share a certain type of brain tumor, one of these 120 ones. But there are subtle differences. And these differences make it so hard to use one standard treatment to treat them all. Now, what are these genetic information I keep talking about? These genetic information are a little bit like a code. A code that you can write on the computer. You type something in and your computer is performing an action. And it's the same for the cell in the body and also for the brain. We have a genetic code in the cell. It gets read out and we have a protein that is a molecule that has very specific functions. And these functions are important to keep the cell healthy and working and it's especially important in the brain as well. We have many different cells and many different cell types. Each have a very unique genetic code with many specific functions. Now, in the case of cancer, it just takes one cell to an accumulate an alteration in this genetic code. We call it a mutation. These mutations can affect the functioning of the protein 
so the functioning of the cell. As a consequence, these altered cells multiply a lot faster. They accumulate more and more mutations over time. And a complex tumor is forming with many abnormal cells, the cancer cells. But, and this is the interesting part, the tumor is not just cancer cells. It is many cells, many healthy cells in addition. For example, blood vessels. They're really important in the whole body and in the brain to supply the brain with nutrition, such as oxygen, glucose, and whatever the brain and also the tumor needs. In addition, we have immune cells. They're the natural body defense. They detect and try to destroy these abnormal cells in the body. So overall, we have a quite complex environment in this tumor. We call it the tumor microenvironment. And it is responsible for the subtle differences in our tumor fingerprint. So to understand this tumor microenvironment and the cancer cells and this complex interaction a little bit better, we're using a technique called single cell RNA sequencing. Yes, that is a very long word. We call it short single cell genomics. A little bit better. So single cell genomics allows us to understand these critical genetic information that are responsible for these unique cells. We can take the tumor, we isolate the individual cells, we perform single cell genomics, and what we get are large data sets. And these data sets contain the genetic information of each and every individual cell, of each and every individual tumor. So we can understand each patient individually. We can study the cancer cells, the immune cells, the cells of the blood vessels. I can tell you we are dealing with a lot of information and we have to compute all this information. In my project specifically, I'm looking at the interaction of cancer cells and the immune cells. As I mentioned, usually these immune cells are responsible to detect and fight these cancer cells. But you know that very well, sometimes our immune system is not so great. For example, when we have the flu or a cold, sometimes the immune cells can detect bacteria or viruses and also cancer cells that are growing in the body. So why is that? We're asking this question and trying to understand these mechanisms that the cancer cells are using to interact with immune cells and suppress their normal function. Single cell genomics helps us to understand these very critical genetic information of every cell to understand this very complex interaction. So why do we do all this effort to understand each tumor and all these molecular mechanisms individually? Imagine you're a brain cancer patient with a very rare tumor. Standard treatments may not work for you. With this approach, single cell genomics, it allows us to understand the details of every tumor fingerprint in detail. So we may find therapeutic targets that work for one tumor patient with this very rare tumor that does not work for any other patient. Every patient with a rare tumor has a chance of a successful therapy. With my project, I'm trying to really help patients with all 120 different types of brain tumors. At the end of this talk, I actually like to thank these brain tumor patients that are donating their tumors to science. They allow me to use these modern techniques such as single cell genomics to understand in depth these 120 different types of brain tumors and find therapy for the ones that may cannot be cured with standard therapy. Thank you very much.